hold on. Give me just a second. We gotta complete the picture here. Let me get that. <laughs> gotta add a nice motion picture here. Welcome back to JJ's Pick Shop. This time we're gonna be working on the, four, the 440 and the Roadrunner trying to get the. Uh, would you stop? No. you're back hello so we spent the last couple days cleaning this thing out i took a bunch of diesel cleaned through it just to make sure there wasn't any loose particles floating around in there i i saw a bunch in the the valley pan and then we took the camshaft out re-lubed that up made sure it's still good to go everything looks fine it spins great uh so we're just gonna i'm gonna you know fast forward where it goes and put this all back together see you in a minute So we got the heads torqued down. The lifters are in here. We got the push rod sitting in. And here's the trick for shaft roller rockers, or shaft, not rollers, but shaft rockers, is you'd use a dipstick and just kind of run it along these pedestals here. And that way it holds the push rods in place. So when you spin the, uh, let me grab them real quick. When you spin the rockers on, you can kind of just roll it over. Get them all. Oh, come on. There we go. Get them on. Roll them over. Kind of line them up with the holes on the pedestals. And you get, they kind of hold in place. Otherwise, the rockers or the push rods will be way sitting down here. So if you have a, but if you have a little dipstick to hold them in place, that way you can tighten them down and they're all kind of sitting where they're supposed to be. Unless you got 17 hands to hold it all in one place, that's the best way I've found to do it. A little top tip. So it's been a couple days since you last saw it, but uh, it's, start, it's amazing that Summit's actually starting to sell, or the big box companies are starting to sell stuff for a big block Mopar. But these headers are $250, they're Summit brand. This water pump housing is aluminum from Summit Racing. The uh, harmonic balancers from Summit, the distributors from eBay, but it's it's finally getting to the point where you can kind of afford to build Mopars, because the <clears throat> the other places are starting to sell stuff for cheap. 
But we also got a run stand. It's uh, set up for a small block Chevy because nobody in the Midwest builds anything but a small block Chevy. But we found uh, found this on Facebook Marketplace for a pretty good deal. It's already set up. I'm not entirely sure why they uh, they put the control panel back here because this is the back. That's where the header is. And that's that's where the other header is. And you know you're gonna sit back here and then just get with exhaust that's probably not not your best move so we'll probably relocate this but the rest of it looks pretty good hey so we got the uh, driver's side frame rail that we fabricated up it's in the car uh, we've got it tacked right now it's just kind of hanging out right now we did put a couple spot welds on this one side once i welded this to the front and I graphed this in, basically fused it to the front, the existing frame rail. This thing was like, eh, it was a little bit too much that way. It happens with heat and different things. So I put a porter band in here. If you've ever seen the one that Harbor Freight has, it's kind of a ram tool. It has all kinds of attachments with it. It will move things that you can't. I mean, it's it's it'll sit there and hold it. It held it in place. I put a couple tacks in there. Now it's there and it's straight and it looks a lot better. So this, now we're moving on to the side. This is, yeah, we cut that, uh, that out, it's bad. We have the piece right here uh, made up. This is the old one here, as you can see, it's pretty rusty. It really wasn't that bad, but as you can see towards the, towards the front of the car, or the back of the car, it was pretty rotted. Uh, took some two by six tubing we got from Shapiro over in St. Louis. Uh, as you're looking at these, you can see there's a little bit of a, you know, whoop, it goes like this. So you put a slice in it, kind of put it on the bench. You can, you know, clamp it down or whatever. Bend it manually till you get the right angle. You know, kind of set it up to it. Say, oh, yeah, that looks good. And then this one here, when it goes the other way, you have to pie cut it. You have to put a, a little angle in it and cut less and then grind out more as you go. That way, when you put it up, you bend it up there. Ah, uh, that's not enough. You can grind out more, yeah, a little bit more, and then you can de do it dead on. Put a couple tacks on it, weld it in there, you know, grind it flush. And then we took basically sheet metal, about 90 thousandths steel, and put it on top, boxed it in. The factory is a stamped U-shaped with two little ears on it. We just boxed it in, put it up there, put a nice booger weld on top of it, and I will grind that flush these wonderful flap wheels we bought off of amazon it's like 40 of them for 30 bucks you can't beat that they're 80 cents a piece these things are five bucks everywhere anyway um <clears throat> so grind that nice little apex in there looks like it was bent like it's a radius of a bend and we'll throw it up in there the next we have this rather than patch that and I mean, this side's good. Anybody want to explain that to me? How come the right side's beautiful? I mean, really, like, beautiful. No, I mean, no problems. This rotted out like nothing. It's like, you know, they didn't primer it enough or didn't undercoat it enough. Who knows? Car was from Michigan. I'm going to put those spring re relocation kits in there. Mopar Performance used to make them. This is it right here. Direct connection, the most Mopar Performance U.S. car tool is who we got these from. These are sexy. Look at them. They're thick. They're well made. The welds are nice. Even tell you L for a left, R for right. You know, dummy proof it, guys like me. Comes with everything you need. Instructions are good. Then we can move inboard the frame rail, or the, uh... What the heck are they called? Seriously, I haven't been drinking tonight. Leaf springs. Move them inboard. You can put some fatties under there if you want to. Um, you're kind of limited to the size of of your uh, wheelhouse, but still, you know, it's good. Get those installed, get it on the ground, and then we will go to the Badness 440. John Michael and I built this engine when he was in high school for his charger, and it's a standard bore. We bought the last forge pistons we could find anywhere. I, I honestly, I think we bought the last Speed Pro forge pistons 
that was available for standard because a lot of these things of course they're you know they're bored out some of them were bored out from the factory just you know a little bit here and there look at this we have a 240 nissan just sitting here with a six liter hanging out in it this is doug's little drift car it's got the angle kit on it already got the six liter ls it's going to go in it rear wheel drive japanese car with a big american v8 how cool is that this thing is going to smoke the tires all day long we do everything here all right so i know you guys hear this from a lot of people it's kind of goofy on youtube or whatever subscribe and like you could you could say that but it's if you guys could help us out put us on the map at least you know the car on the lift behind me we would have we would have scrapped this thing 20 years ago no problem i wouldn't even thought twice about it we just scrapped it parted it out but these cars are gone now see look how pretty is that thing it's just so cool we can't we can't get them made anymore they're gone these guys these cars are going away and if you know amd and all those companies make everything for this car you put it together even you know it doesn't have to be perfect let's just try to save them guys get the rust out of it put the structure back in the car at the very least and keep them get them running driving even if they look like this i mean what would you think if you saw that going down the road you know rumpy rump rusty quarters do you care if it's got rusty quarters you're like holy crap no he's 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 driving it that's a real road runner he's driving it so anyway Move on down to town, yeah. turn it down so we've been test fitting this frame rail to go back in and we're seeing there's still a couple boogers back here from the old one i think the easiest way that we came up with is just slice it here and maybe slice it there and Hold just out. yep absolutely wait it's still connected here it's gonna be hmm Okay, so got a little bit of not much at all. <laughs> Made this move, but not this because it's got that big. Ah. Well, oh yeah, well it's still connected to this frame rail back here. Yeah. That little. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. Well, you could slice it here. No, that's the plate. We want to keep the plate yeah. intact. Let me take the plate off. How do we take the plate off? You gotta buy these anyway. They're rough. No, that one's not, damn it. Yeah, they're $35 a piece. Yeah, it's worth it. They'll look nice. We can be good. <laughs> Inside? Uh -uh. Lightning scissors? Yeah, yeah, I can. Absolutely can. Connected. Oh, yeah, because they didn't. They didn't do the, yeah. Weld it to the trunk. A little bit of welding to do once we get this done. Yeah. We'll go from the top and drill some spot welds, connect everything. Yeah, because they did not connect any of this to the trunk pan when they replaced it. They did a bad job there. Let's go. Hey, Doug, what are you doing over here, man? Oh, you know, just having hopes and dreams. Well, the mounts are in. <laughs> Those are cool because they look like big block Chevy valve covers. Adds a little flare to it. Make it look a little more just better, you know, instead of just wires and hoses going everywhere. Right. And then when you get the car intake and move all the brackets down, it'll look really nice. Hell yeah. 
which won't happen ever. It's never gonna play it. Let's be real. <laughs> what are you hitting over there? But the 440's ready to go, ish. I mean, it's still got to put the intake on and stuff, but we're getting there. We can make those. <laughs> yeah. We can make those. Got a thin sheet metal. Easy peasy. So now what? Spot welds? Maybe. The bane of our existence. Why do we torture ourselves with unibody cars all the time. Because they're cool! <laughs> that's, that's true. They're fast, they don't have full frames, they're just awesome. They're light, and they rust. And they twist. Yeah, they twist. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's that. So, after, I don't know, 20 minutes of prying and cussing and grinding and crying and a little bit of some mud and the blood and the beer. Yep, that one. We uh, we got it out, so now we can test fit this frame rail in here. But we're under here and we noticed something cool. Check this out. <laughs> you know what all that is? That is tire from burnout from who knows, 30 years ago. Because he, he hit it really hard and all of a sudden something just fell all over my face. And I was trying to figure out what it was. And I looked under there. That That's old rubber. That's been sitting there forever. That's that, pretty cool. That's when I hear John Ray say, I'm only buying you one set of tires. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, <clears throat> the right side's kind of in there with a homemade frame rail. We got some metal finish to do. Well, he does. I'm not the metal guy. And then it'll end up looking about like this one does. Okay, passenger side frame rails tacked in place that we fabricated. Driver side, it's in. Uh, got a few more welds to make her strong. Find some more uh, spot weld areas we could put in. We have that rear cross member from uh, classic to current fabrication. Been buying a lot of structure parts from them. It's not a lot of it's not AMD, but it's it's good high quality stuff. Fast shipping. They give a veterans discount. Uh, I've got that balanced up there on that stand perfectly. Uh, don't pay attention to the vice grip. I have a clamp there because I could have spent like 10 minutes trying to balance this thing. It doesn't balance. It falls right off. It's at an angle. I'm not that smart. I just kept trying. So then we'll get that weld in place. Get these plates put back on. They're thicker metal. We're just going to blast those plates and then uh, spot weld them back on. Plug weld, whatever you call it. Uh, hillbilly spot welds like uh, on the Camaro. Uh, put those on the back of it. Then we'll move to the front of the rear frame rails. Put these spring relocation kits from US Car Tool and uh, go from there. Get this thing on the road this year. <laughs> we changed our mind. So uh, after a couple blue can beverages, we came up with an idea. I don't know if it's good, but it's going to be fun. So the engine that's in the Barracuda, if you look back, the last three videos before the Roadrunner one was, uh, we called it the Big Block Barracuda Swap. We did a slant 6 to 383, four speed, pretty cool car now. But the 383 that we put in that car is a late 1968. So it's a 69 model year, 383, a real HP block. Probably came out of a 69 Roadrunner at some point in its life. So is that a 3 to 3 Magnum or a Super Commando? It's a Super Commando if it's Plymouth. Okay, so it's Magnum if it's a Dodge. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So if we, if we put the 69 383 in the 69 Roadrunner that had a 383 in it, it makes it... See, I'm trying to convince myself here. That's, that's, that's really what's Talking going on Talking our way here. through this. Because <laughs> I really just want to put a 440 in the Barracuda that we built 10 years ago. It's brand new. This is nasty. It's pretty rowdy. It's it's high compression, flat top, forged pistons, forged crank. It's a huge- Standard block. Yeah, standard bore. I mean, it's really hard to find. It's a late 70s block, so who really cares about it? But it's still pretty neat. Um, it's a huge 3038 BL, I think is what, what the numbers, HE 3030, whatever. Yep. Pretty rowdy. I, there's cam specs somewhere on the interwebs. I can't remember them off the top of my head. Not, it's on a 110. It's a rumpety cam. It's on a 110. I remember yeah. that part. <laughs> but so I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to bring the Barracuda in, pull the engine out, uh, swap everything over to this one, put this on our new run stand that we, we got used 
with you know stupid small block Chevy stuff all over it because nobody in the Midwest really builds mm -hmm. anything besides a small block Chevy or an LS, which yeah, it, but it's a good start. It has everything but the mounts, so we're good. Yeah, we'll yeah. figure that one out. We'll break in the camshaft on that, put it back into the uh, put this into the Barracuda, put the 383 mm -hmm. into the car that it really deserves to be in. Again, trying to convince ourselves. It's been a little bit since we've made a video because we're trying to do a bunch of projects all at once. Uh, this winter's going to get pretty weird. <laughs> so Dougie's building his drift car. It's got a uh, six liter LS out of a, what is it, Tahoe? I don't know, four wheel drive something. We, Doug likes to pick the hottest day of the year to do anything. And so we pulled that engine out of a junkyard in California when it was 112 or something. So I, I'm not really a big fan of that engine, but we're gonna, it's going in there. It's going in there. We're going to try to drift next year. Well, he is going to try to drift and I'm going to laugh and pull the camera. <laughs> Look at him. So uh, I think that's, that's, that's our current plan. There's probably going to be three or four videos coming out in December. I would really like to do burnouts in the Roadrunner before Christmas. Will, will it happen? I'm not, I'm not sure, maybe, possibly, we're gonna add more tire. You, know, you saw earlier it had tire in it. You know, or it has it. tire debris in it. We're gonna, we're gonna add more. Mm -hmm. So I think that's it. Uh, we, will, we wish you guys happy holidays coming up. So uh, stay tuned, subscribe, leave a comment. If you think this is a good idea or a bad idea, probably gonna do it anyway, but I'd like to hear your opinion. <laughs> All right, amen, later guys. All right, now, now really, Joe, what, what did you get us into here? All right, so it's pretty rough, so we're gonna part it right here. Now, if it was like a 21 or a 23 window, we'd yank the whole thing out just, just because. But yeah, it's, it's not really, uh, it's too far gone. Um, so this will help save my bus. And it's got a bumper, and it's got a seat, and a lot of good stuff. So weird stuff you find out in the middle of. Murray? Murray, Kentucky. Murray, Kentucky. Joe, 100 bucks could be yours. Right? <sighs> yeah, where did you where did you bring me? Good lord. Facebook marketplace later. <laughs> Thanks Facebook. <laughs>